Hey, greetings, Loft family uh, from the Lloyd House. Uh, my name's Travis, and, and here's oh. Lennox. We uh, we wanted to create an encouraging video for you guys, and I kind of thought in my mind, what's more encouraging than a beautiful baby in a video? <laughs> so we will see how long she lasts in this video. But today, um, we're going to read from Scripture a little bit, and then I'll tell you a couple thoughts of what I had about it and just some ways that I've helped um, kind of overcome some worry in my life. Today's scripture that we're going to look at is Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 25 through 34. So I want you to kind of, um, as you're listening to this, just picture yourself um, being taught from Jesus. This is Jesus specifically speaking on worry. So let's uh, go ahead and dive into the scriptures here and see what it has to say. So it says, uh, do not worry. Jesus speaking says, Therefore, therefore, I tell you, oh, she wants to go. I have to let her go. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, drink, or about what, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more important and more valuable than they? You, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour of life to or a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? You see how the lilies of the field grow; they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all of his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, is, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Wow. Some encouraging words there from the Sermon on the Mount. So here we can see from Jesus' teaching that he is preaching and teaching a sermon on worry. He is telling his listeners, and he's telling us today, not to worry. Because he provides first for the birds who don't even store up food. And second, he clothes the, the grass in splendor and beauty, which is here today and gone tomorrow. He reassures us by saying that, how much more important are we, God's crown, crown jewel, that the, over the birds in the grass? And the answer to this question is, is we're infinitely more important than the birds and the grass, which he provides for. So the real question for me is actually, uh, how do we not worry in a way that actually paralyzes us? This sounds easy in theory, but may be harder in practice. The only way to prevent worry from crippling us is to, is to renew your mind each and every day in God's word and in prayer. Spend time in God's word and allow like his truth to just change the way you think. So I'm going to share with you some encouraging truths that I kind of repeat to myself when, uh, when worry tries to like overtake me and cripple me. And these are some truths that I've experienced through tough times and um, just kind of such as these. Um, and these truths are, first of all, that God knows, God cares, God is willing and God is able. So I'll repeat these for you again. And I kind of meditate on these. So God knows, God cares, God is willing, and God is able. And when I'm saying these things, I'm going to kind of talk about them. So what does God know? So God knows everything about me and my situations. He knows about my job. He knows about my family. He knows about my health. He knows about my future. He knows about insert anything that you want. He knows everything. So there's not... Not comfort in that alone, but moving on to what God knows about, God cares about. God cares about the things he knows. 
knowing without caring for me would provide little comfort. But when you say that God knows, and then you add on top of that, that God cares, you're like, man, God cares about what he knows about. And he knows about me. And it says that God knows everything about you. He knows the number of hairs on your head. So moving down to the third one, God is willing. So God is actually willing to involve himself in the things that he knows and cares about. So if he knows and he cares, great. You're thinking that, okay, well, caring without being willing to involve yourself in my life isn't really going to help me. But I know that not only does God know, but God cares. He's also willing to involve himself, and he's going to involve himself in the things that he knows and cares about, which is you. The last thing is, is God is able. So if we go back to the first three truths that says, if God knows, God cares, and God is only willing but he's not able to help again. There is no comfort. But what we know from scripture is that God is able to do anything. And when you slam this last truth about God, that he is able, it is, I don't know, extreme comfort in any circumstances. Because it says that, man, God knows me. God cares about what he knows about, which is me. God is willing to involve himself in what he cares and knows about. And lastly, the, 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 I guess the, the slam dunk per se, is that he's able to help what he is. He's able to help what he knows and cares about because he's willing. Um, So, however, just kind of to reaffirm these truths, God knows, God cares, God is willing, and God is able to help each and every one of us in this time of trouble. That is the God that we serve. Um, I kind of want to just finish up with a... uh, a prayer of blessing and comfort. And um, so let's go ahead and finish with prayer. Our great heavenly father, I pray that you will just help comfort each and every one of us. God, you know, God, you care about what you know about. You are willing and able to help the things that you care and know about God. I pray that you will just make these truths real in each one of our lives. I ask all these things in your name. Amen. Hey, law family. Um, just hope that this video helped you out. Just know that Jacqueline Lennox and I, uh, we greatly miss you. We love you. We're praying for you. We know that we will get to see you again. We just hope that it's soon. All right. Bye.